Here we are, live from Detroit, Michigan, on Heather's Long Box with David Brown Jr. Or you just go by Dave, don't you? Just Dave. Yep. Just Dave. I'm sorry. I'm just being so proper. No, nope, you're all good. I get it all the time. Trust me. Okay. Well, um, in a little bit, you're going to find out why I call Dave my wonder twin. Um, we are here to talk about comics, uh, what's in your long box, we'd like to ask. And then you can tell us about what you're working on. Okay. So what's in your long box? What's in my long box? Okay, so the long box is pretty much what I am working on, correct? You can tell me what you're working on, or you could tell me about your collection. Oh, my collection is huge. <laughs> well, like I, like pretty much with me and you, really, we pretty much a lot, we have a lot of similarities in comics, so we definitely have a good matchup there. Um, Comic-wise, oh, that would be... You've got, like, what, seven long boxes? You said? Yeah. I do. You were pulling them out into the living room? I really was, yeah. I was trying to, I got in the mood because I was watching you uh, when you was posting up stuff, and I was like, I had just gotten mine out of climate control storage. Oh, see there? And see, I still have some, um, actually, I still have some more that's actually in storage. So, but I keep all my favorite ones at home, so it's like seven boxes. Seven boxes of favorites. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very long boxes, and pretty much really stuck to the max, too. Well, I had, so we, we were like little kids. We were up late at night messaging each other. It really was. And we were sending pictures to each other of our comics. Um, and I was missing a few. And I realized, you know, what had happened and everything. So I replaced some of my stuff because you inspired me so much. Oh. And I, I'm digging here through Gemini mailers. Lord have mercy. Hey, is that an empty? Um, so I just wanted to show you which ones that I have uh, replaced that you're going to say, yeah, I have that. I originally had this one framed in a um, frame from Dave Music. Oh, And okay. he kind of customized it for me. It was blue with a Wonder Woman sticker nice. and a banner on top. And um, when my ex-husband and I parted ways, a couple of things went missing, including that. Um, and then um, they did a series of monster variant covers this one is like, this is like my favorite. Yeah. One of my top favorites. That, that is, is wonderful. That's a good one. And, and I think that you know why I like this one. Yes. <laughs> That's such a good one. And we've got like a Medusa look going on. Love the cover. And I do have, I just um, bought from a comic book seller one of the other monster variant covers with Wonder Woman with the green hair, you know, looking like the Joker. Mm -hmm. um, and this was like a whole month long series that they had of monster variant covers. And it wasn't just Wonder Woman, it was other DC characters. So I know your favorite guy. I think there might be some of Batman. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you have those variants in one of your boxes. I have a lot of variants of, of different, especially Batman. It's a lot of Batman. And actually, you had got me pretty much really to doing even more Wonder Woman stuff. I was like, oh, man, I, said, I do have a lot of Wonder Woman. I said, like, I feel like I need some more Wonder Woman, to be honest. Because <laughs> so, like, you got some that I was like, oh, man, that's pretty dope right there. So I said, like, so... That inspired me to go back into really um, back into collecting comics, and you know, going pretty much really going back to the comic book shop, because you know, me being an artist and me being you know creating comics of my own, pretty much you know, it's I guess it's you know, to step away from that and go back to appreciate where it all came from, where the inspiration really came from. Right, because it's, when we were kids, you had to go to a brick and mortar store. You, you couldn't go on Amazon or eBay. No, 
it didn't exist. So you're going back to your basics, mm-hmm. going back to the roots, mm-hmm. and is that inspiring you then for your own creations? It is. It does. And, you know, and also, you know, it gives you a good feel, especially being in a comic book shop, you know, especially when you have somebody, you know, uh, you know, a regular shop that you normally go to, you know, so it's like, you know, a good familiar feel and everything and get getting those really tight boxes pretty much and looking through and be like, oh, I got this one. Oh, I got this one. Don't have this one. So, yeah. And is your brick and mortar store, do you go to the same one? Yes. So are we going to plug Chris Brown at Comics and More? Yes, we will. Yes. <laughs> now we'll go ahead and throw it. <laughs> yep. We're right in there. Dave's a little nervous now. I know where he shops. <laughs> Honestly, dude, I've not been following him around. <laughs> well, show me some of some of your books. Okay. Well, um, I have I have two books that actually came out. I worked on them, you know, side by side at the same time. Something I said I'll never ever do again, ever. <laughs> that was a very very lot of work. Um, my first book, obviously, is 313, one, three, one, three. Um, It's a personal piece, one that um, I started working on because I wanted to do an action. I, all my books, I want to work on something, you know, in different genre, different categories, pretty much, from horror, suspense, drama, family, adventure, you know, action. And cover all the genres. I want to cover them all. And then I go back and start doing two, three, <laughs> four issues and stuff like that, so... Um, one three one three is pretty much based on really, you know, a hero pretty much comes into town, Detroit, of course, where he resides, seven mile Gratche represents still. And he realized that the town is the city is not the way he obviously is where he left it, really. It's more really super nice. And it's kinda of like it's kind of a weird spot. So with him having to deal with that and wonder what's happening, he has to also you know, deal with him, the separation from his family and friends. So, because a lot of people people don't know why he left, which is, which comes later in the issues. So he's learning to adapt. Exactly. And then, so it's mostly really, um, you can kind of really put together the comic, it's more of a Street Fighters meet Detroit, or Fatal um, Final Fight. If you into those kind of like old school um, fighting games, that's where the inspiration really comes from. Wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to talk about Fight Club. <laughs> we just talked about the old part, not the end, <laughs> not what happens in that. So the title mm-hmm. comes from? Uh, Detroit, um, a zip code pretty much, um, where I reside at a young age. So. Um, well, in, in the, a big portion of Michigan was the 313 area code. And now, you know, they've added the, the area codes as the population has grown and, you know, the, to support the phone system. So uh, 1313 is just mostly Detroit. Now. Mostly Detroit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Totally correct. And um, as far as my next book really is the A New Adventure, The Browns Family. Now, a lot of people have asked me like, you know, well, don't you have a Browns family already out? And I said, you know, yes, I do. But um, I want to do a uh, pretty much a reboot on the series already because I had created those books, my first beginning books out of, you know, when I first started doing digital. And I really did it for really, mostly really my kids pretty much because they was, you know, just learning how to read and stuff. So it was really simple words to stand the third. So... Going out and doing that, and then I did like three issues. Then I bring in my daughter in my third issue, and then I said, like, okay, I start working on other books. And then I said, well, I want to, you know, redo us again, you know, redo my family again. And this time we could do a little bit more depth into it, bringing in my daughter, bringing in with the boys is like what my job life is, my wife's job. You know, one issue might be just about her, one issue might be about me, one issue might be about the kids. So, that's where that comes from and that's where it's pretty much where i'm starting it off that's why the first issue pretty much breaks down pretty much what you know what everybody is and what our job titles is and what is leading into so well between your sons and your daughter there is kind of an age gap yes because my my one boy he's 11 and my twins are eight and my daughter is three so it's a nice 
definitely a nice gap. She, but she, <laughs> she is. She almost look. She, if you be around her, you would think she was ten herself. So it's like you know. She, she definitely. I'm sorry, but she rules the roost. Yeah, yeah, that's her. <laughs> that's her. And and you know she may be small, but she is mighty. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> that is the right word for her. <laughs> And, um, you know, she's, she's, you know, she's petite, she's tiny, she's the, the most adorable thing. But um, I got to tell you, those those little people, you got to watch out for them. They're scrappers. <laughs> yeah, they are. And she, got, she, she already had three brothers, too. So it's kind of like, yeah. But she's, she's, you know, hey, hey, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> That's her. That's her all day. Definitely. <laughs> so you actually did not bring this one. I did not. But well, we are showing representation of you here okay. at the Indie Vault Studio. So tell me about this one. I wish. I wish is pretty much was another one that was a really personal piece, really. It's really about a, um, a family dealing with loss, grief, a uh, father dealing with the loss of his family while dealing with the afterlife and the family dealing with the loss of, you know, their husband, their father, you know, while dealing with life itself. But, you know, things happen in the book where <laughs> it gets pretty much, you know, things start coming into kind of like one, but we have to see how far it goes with that. Okay. So. That's, that was more of a really personal um, piece that I did pretty much, you know, because, you know, our whole thing is about immortality and stuff like that, you know, death, you know, you know what's going to happen to my wife, my kids, you know, something happens to me, you know, stuff like this. So I feel like I had to get that out, really. Well, I think as soon as you marry, your priorities change mm-hmm. overnight and you start to, you know, uh, you know, first you're, you're in this bubble of bliss mm-hmm. and euphoria is all around you. And then when you marry, you start thinking about the serious stuff and you kind of worry um, because you have more responsibility. 100%. And then the kids start coming. And then you're first you you learn unconditional love mm-hmm. when that baby comes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's no expectations of that child yet. Anyway, you're right. You're right. Um, but your priorities, again, change and you have to adjust. And while, you know, a baby is a bundle of joy. There's a lot of stress involved too. It is totally, and that's one. I mean, that's one of them. You know, something that you don't. You know, you hate to think something could happen, but you know, it's reality. So that's why you know that book came to play, and also, of course, I have to make it as friendly as you know, because I still I still want my kids to read it, you know, and you know enjoy it and stuff like that. So right, because you don't have like on any of your comics, they're they're all family oriented. None of them are like mature audience only. No. Or no. Well, I, yes, one is, but you know, it still has that kind of like kid kind of like kind of like look, so it's mostly really more of a adult kind of like, well, I say mature teen rated kind of like. Okay. Okay. Now, you are the artist on Lola's comic, Lure. Mhm. Um and that's our own indie princess here at the uh, Indie Vault Studio. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> well, so you have, you, you know, like a lot of time when you look at an artist and you look at your work, you think that they can just do that one thing. They just have that one style or that one look. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, some artists, you, you kind of know their work. You can say, oh, that's Jay Foskett. Oh, that's, you know, Litchfield or whatever. But you can do different things i can yes i (laughs) i try and fit stuff that's why i really love doing my own personal channel like pieces i mean even though you know i'll have somebody come in and say like could you work on my book i'm just like i just work on laura laura and and it's like you know when you have somebody that trusts you into doing you know you know Bringing their, I guess, their, their yeah, story to life. Right. And to embrace your style into their work, pretty much, you know, there's nothing but nothing better than that. So I always try to make sure I match pretty much what's what and everything, you know, and see where they're going with this because maybe they don't want a cartoon kind of way or, you know, or 
maybe they do, maybe they want realistic, you know, or maybe they want this, maybe they want that. I can match anything, you know, but it's just the fact that, you know, one time, two, you know, as long as I get to, you know, as long as I get to express myself and be true to me, you know, it will be fantastic, actually. I have a very small cameo in Lure, and I'd like to just point out right away that I have my clothes on. She did. <laughs> she Thank did. you. Thank you <laughs> she did. Thank you for giving me my dignity. She did. Um, she but, definitely you know, did. I'm, I'm dancing. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm very respectful to, <laughs> to people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is um, a very explicit comic book. Yeah, which was pretty hard to work work on because I do work a lot at home. And, you know, of course, and like a lot of people do know, I have a lot of kids. So it's kind of like, you know, I got to make sure, you know, and I sometimes work off my tablet and I'll be on the couch. They're like, what you doing? Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to make sure I got, you know, make sure it's like, you know, cover and I'll, I'll you know, I'll probably definitely work in the office. I'm working, if I'm working on this, I'll go work in the office, really. What we're trying to say is Lure has a lot of nudity. Um, I, it was the first page or like the second page. There was a, a lot of um, white stuff that just, you know, shocked me. <laughs> um, but she, um, Lola did a lot of um, crowd, crowdfunding yes. for that. And you have a ring on. Yes. I love this ring. I kid you not. I guess so many compliments from it, actually. So, you know, it's just it's something that I, I really love about it. It came with, you know, the, the you, Kickstarter, Kickstarter rewards. rewards. Yes. And um, and so the main character has that ring that, on. That's this ring, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There was, um, well, so did you get yours in the mail? Actually, I got mine personally from the creator herself. Did you get all of, like, there was a separate envelope with a lot of goodies. Did you get that? Yes. Yes. There was a condom in there. I'm like, I, I still I have it. I don't, I don't know, you know, I, you know, do you hold it up to the light and make sure that the pins that came with it didn't pierce the condom? You know, maybe this isn't, you know, one of those kinds that you actually use. I, I don't know. I keep it as a souvenir, pretty much. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I have to put it up because I have a lot of collectibles. So I got to make sure, you know, the kids don't walk by like, hey, what's that? And it's like, you know, so let's make sure it's up the next to the book. It's going to catch their eye. It yeah. really is. So <laughs> <laughs> they have some very wandering eyes, definitely. It reminds me of the episode of um, Everybody Loves Raymond where um, the kids were going to go with the grandparents after trick-or-treating. So Ray goes to the pharmacy and he gets a bunch of condoms and he shoves them up in the kitchen cabinet <laughs> because know. like kids were running around and they ran out of candy. His dad was passing out the candy. And so his dad goes running in the kitchen and looks, sees this bag and they're like, I guess the condoms are like gold medallion, like the chocolate, it looks like a coin. And so his dad was passing out the condoms and then Ray and his wife come home and then Ray is having to go in the neighborhood and tackle children down <laughs> and grab the condoms from them. So hopefully, no, you know, you one. said you put it up. Yeah, it was all put up. <laughs> you can't have that. <laughs> oh. So uh, last year, we had a great time at Monroe Comic Con, and it's about that time again. Yes. So uh, Gary and Don um, put on the show. Very family-friendly, very family-oriented. Very, very. Um, her dad does security, and, and he's intimidating, I will tell you. Very intimidating. So Monroe Pop Fest is September 16th and 17th this year at the FMB Expo Center in Monroe. Um, they really do a great job. There's plenty of parking, and they have food trucks yes. um, on the outside. Um, plenty of entertainment for the kids, for the family, Um it's pretty much anything you can really ask for, really, actually, out there from food, entertainment, um, cosplay contests. The Ghostbusters are outside. The all Ghostbusters. The time. Um, and then, obviously, you know, you come inside to the vendors and artists and spend some more money. So. <laughs> you hope, anyway. Yeah. And also, I'm the guy who actually is going to be doing the badges for Moreau, also. So, 
If you want your badge signed by me, come find me out. And this little stinker did not bring his tablet, so we can't get a sneak peek of anything. Um, but next, so so next month, August, um, we have a set of tickets, two set two sets of two that we're going to give away on the show um, for the September comic, well, pop fest. Pop fest. Because San Diego Comic Con decided to um, copyright their name, so everybody who went and used Comic Con had to change it. And I remember Gary, you know, yeah. reaching out to people on Facebook, you know, you know, for input and stuff. So they they decided on the Monroe Pop Fest. Um, this year is their tenth tenth year, yeah. so a whole decade. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. And um, you know, a lot. Congratulations. A lot's <laughs> changed since last year. Um, we have a friend that we were hanging out with, and we were making him laugh, and he was having a good time. But right before he had gone to the to travel for for Monroe um he learned about the death of a relative yes and he wrote none of us knew none of us knew no not at all we were you know cheering him up and he was enjoying our company and so after you know a lot of vendors and and creators you know will thank everybody and talk about what a great time they had and and he did that too Clive did that too that was very very touch. that was very touching yeah. and it was you know like you said too, because we was we was having a blast, and I was having I cannot tell you how much I was. I cannot explain how much fun I really did have I, talking with everybody. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> it was, it was like, a blast. It was. It, it was we like had, I had fun. So it much was fun. like, I, you know, I was just, um, you know, there as a as you know a, a regular guest. You know, I bought my ticket and everything like that. But there were what three or four guys along this row, and you know we were just walking back and forth. Just walking and, back and forth. <laughs> and um, you know we didn't have a clue about what he was going through. So when Not he wrote what he did last year, I was just I was just so shocked. I felt so bad, but I'm glad that you know he was where he he wanted to be. You know, with friends and, and laughing and having a good time. Um, so this year, he's engaged. Yes. He is announced on Congrats, Facebook. Congratulations, of course. And he just, he's always posting pictures about how much his life has changed, how positive it is, and how her family has embraced him. That's fantastic. So, yes. you know, here last year, he, he, he lost his stepmother. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then this year, he has a whole new family. And, and that's what, you know, Comic-Cons are about. It is. You know, once you... Um, embrace and start pretty much building that trust and friendship around other people and then you know you start going to other shows and you start meeting outside of shows and stuff like that you know that really tight friendship start building up and you know i feel like that's where you know the inspiration the you know the i can't i can't think of nothing else it's just a it's a fantastic feeling for me well, you're a creator <laughs> yeah so you, and then you talk with other creators and other artists so you guys inspire each other as, as you know, exactly. kind of like the, the, the vibe I get. Yes. And then, but then on top of that, you also get that from, you know, customers or guests or whoever, you know, that comes to your table. You know, you, you sometimes will build a, a whole relationship with that person, you know, from doing a commission. See, this is one. <laughs> this, this is one. Came to the table, we started talking and stuff like that, and boom, here we are. So it's like, messaging you know, each other. <laughs> Like little kids. Do you use a flashlight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly like that, though. And, you know, it makes me feel good to be part of something that's, you know, it's way bigger than, even I, than I even expected. And it can be even bigger, you know, because going to different shows, you meet all kinds of people, you know. But I also, also say it's based off, your, you know, your energy vibe that you give people, you know. If you're cool, you're friendly, you know, you're down to earth, you know, you're welcome to almost anybody, you know, so it happens. And when we were at um, Grand Rapids Spring Fling, um, I, I was treated so well. I got to travel with Indie Volt and got to travel with the Indie Princess. And when you travel with the Indie Troop Princess, let me tell you, you were treated like royalty. I had my own suite. Um, 
so you kept talking about a pool in an arcade, and I go down to the lobby <laughs> in my bathing suit. Oh, jacuzzi. You were talking jacuzzi. about jacuzzi. Yeah, jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I, and you know, me aching with my fibromyalgia, I was looking forward to that jacuzzi. There's no jacuzzi. There's no jacuzzi. You were somewhere else. I was somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, I don't expect that like to come down. I don't know. <laughs> like, cause everybody, everybody knows when I go to shows, I bring my family, and when I bring my family, pretty much, I don't know nothing about the room. I, I just, I don't know nothing about the room until later that night when I left the show. So they <laughs> tell you go them to the show first. You I go to, to the in. show. Right. I don't. Okay. I don't check in. The wife would check in. I'm already at the show. I'm here. I'm set up. And I'm pretty much staying here because I like to really get to mingle, know the layout of the place. Yeah. And I know like to know. the bathrooms are. I know, like to know where everything <laughs> is. And I like to, you know, get to conversate with other creators too. So, the before because, and after. Right. Because, you know, amongst the show, I'm not going to be able to move because I already worked my table by myself. So, I don't ever get to see the room until way, way later. So, when I see it, it's like, oh, the kids say, you know, the arcade's here, the jacuzzi down here. So, <laughs> I don't know. See, and that's the thing too. When you when you at these shows and you're talking creators and stuff like that, you be like, I'm like, oh, what hotel you at? It's like, it's like, oh, I'm here. It's like, oh, I'm here. It's like, oh, okay, I right, go. But the kids and your wife came to the show, mm -hmm. and um, I got to hug her, got to see the kids, and she was buying them Legos. And I told her something, and she, um, she told me that you would like to hear that that you like being that guy um i was being followed around and i was feeling uncomfortable and you are a safe haven for me when i come and i i know i can slip around to the other side of your table and sit down and um sorry oh. <laughs> but it's it's emotional for you know people who have anxiety or women who feel uncomfortable around, you know, certain types of men or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you were that safe haven for me. Uh oh. And, um, you know, I told your wife, you know, he's that guy that I know that if I'm having a problem, you know, I can go and I can sit there for a little bit, no you doubt. know, yeah. and feel safe. I, I felt I felt safe. And, um, and she gave me a big hug and she <laughs> told me he would just, he would love to hear that he's that guy. Yeah, I do because I like to be that person. You know, you always know you have a chair behind there anytime. Just like how when you came at um, Motor City and you sat there for a minute with me, actually, you know, sitting there, yeah. we sitting there talking, laughing, and stuff like that. So, I mean, and and um, and Great Lakes and Great Lakes, see, yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah, I always love to be that person. I'm happy. I was there. I'm happy I was there for you. Definitely. No doubt. Always. So you don't ever have to worry about that. And so April at Spring Fling is when, um, you know, Varian of Indie Volt approached me about um, a show. Oh, someone's bringing me tissue. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, we talked about the show and everything. And you and I had already talked about um, something that I've been working on uh -huh. um, that's very close to me. And you're like, yeah, you got to thinking about what you were telling me. And I started to do something. And you showed me at Grand Rapids. I did, yeah. I fell in love with it. Yep. I said, I want that. <laughs> What'd you do, Dave? I did a Medusa um, laying down in a tub. And I'm just going to leave it right there because I think me describing it, if you want to describe it, fine. But I think the the visual of it is a more of a, you know, yes. gives it more, you know. Oh, yeah, because you together. pulled that up and I was just like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I was so happy. I was yes. really happy yes. that you did like it. So um, but I, I paid him off. Well, I haven't completely <laughs> paid you off yet. But um, <laughs> so what I'm saying is the stinker didn't bring his tablet. Yeah. Um, so we're not revealing the cover yet, but Dave is um, Dave's done a cover for my book. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Always. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it was just so cool the way it came it came together. Oh man, I'm happy I was even able to do that. But like I said, it was the inspiration that you you know 
I mean, I guess that's one thing about being an artist and being a creator, because, you know, you hear stuff, you see stuff, and it's kind of like, eh, that'd be pretty cool, dude. So you get the sketch and you get the drawing and then, you know, hmm, cool. And then I sort of felt like, oh, I'll show her, I'll show her later, you know, stuff like that when I see her and stuff. So I'm she, so glad you showed me, though. It was just meant to be. Yeah, I guess so. It was like, oh, I guess she liked it. She wanted so. I kind of had to kind of had to go back and figure some things out because, you know, with with the fibro, I soak a lot in the bathtub, the hottest water I can stand. And um, so I wanted to, like, you know, incorporate, you know, the, the tub and everything. So I reworked some things and I made a scene. Oh, wow. That yeah. Dope. And so then there's like this this mini plot now. And um, it just. It's cool. it's OK, cool. see. <laughs> Yep. So, yeah, we, we, we you've inspired me. I apparently have inspired you. This, yes. This is, um, That's exactly what happens. You know. Aesthetic, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Dig it. I love this. When are you getting your new stickers? I know, right? <laughs> I got. Um, they should be coming in pretty much in a couple of days. This this is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna have to shell out some more money to you and say, <laughs> draw me, draw me. <laughs> I am I am getting a price on stickers for my logo, nice. and um, I'm hoping to have those to kind of pass out at Monroe Comic Con. Um, I I won't have a table this year, but I'm hoping next year. Okay, cool. And I can just... hang out with the big guys. Oh man, that'd be so cool, man. I like I love getting all the creators all together. That's why I try to make sure when I you know when I sign up and stuff, I try to make sure. I, like they like they actually like you know would you like to you know recommend you know you got any you know requests i'm like yeah sit me next to this person <laughs> you know so there you know unfortunately there are some people that you just don't vibe with there are some people who are some debbie donors mm -hmm. and um there are other people who are you know the life of the party Let's see what did i get in the mail um so i love lucata perillo uh, he does a lot of Vampirella covers, and um, I'm, I'm really into Vampirella. Um, Storylines don't always mesh for me, but, you know, I um, lately find myself drawn to a lot of the artwork, the artwork rather yeah. than the storyline. So, um, it's funny, too. I just got commission, actually, to do, do her. To do a Vampirella? Yeah. Ooh. I said I've never, I've never drawn her ever, so it's gonna be new. It's gonna be new to me. Oh, I want to see it when it's done. Okay. Good thing we're Facebook friends. <laughs> I'm like pulling up everything but what I want. <laughs> you're like, oh, come on, Heather, you're worse than the kids at Christmas time. <laughs> There's always like the one kid that tears into everything, and there's always the one kid who, you know, has to like put the wrapping paper and fold it and everything. I was that kid. As a, I was that kid. You're saving the wrapping paper <laughs> yeah, and folding it. Yeah, I was. Well, <laughs> I was totally, that was totally me. Okay, so Lucado recently got married in May to a French artist named Carla Cohen, and a friend turned me on, um, Michael to uh, her work. So I was, you know, trying to find, you know, pieces and stuff like to look at. And I, you know, went on eBay, which was probably the big mistake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, somebody loves tape. Wow, look at that. Very, very. So, because Michael and I were talking, and I told him, you know, I showed him what I ordered, you know, what I what I got off of eBay, and you know that it was shipping to me, and I'll just package this up later. Um, and I told him, you know, I was going to be showing it off on the show. He mailed me something, and I was surprised that I got it today. This was his Carla Cohen. Mm. And he just sent it to me and gave it to me for free. 
Nice. Which which is very touching. It's like an early birthday present or something. Yeah, that's badass. Wow. So so now I have two Carlos. Nice. <laughs> the, the start of a collection. The start of another collection. Right. <laughs> I, she doesn't have her own long box yet, but we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> um, so I am getting, um, so I ordered this and I was telling my friend Eric about this. And Eric is a comic book collector and seller. He's one of the um, sellers in the Martini group that I belong to, mm -hmm. uh, set up by Gary Martin. And there's a private um, messenger group. And so I had ordered this. And Eric says, you know, I have a signed slab for sale. So I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. Oh, nice. Yeah. But what's really funny is I ordered this and then I had like one in my cart. I actually have two of these now. I don't know exactly what happened, but I got, so now I'm going to have three of the yeah. bananas, which I already have, I already have this one mm -hmm. and this, so. Wow. There's like a running theme. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. But that is a um, good topic also to talk about, too, um, about shipping. Shipping is well, such yes. a... And we'll, and we'll talk more yeah, about that, but yeah. as you can tell, you know, yeah. like this company stamped their logo. Um, this is a Gemini mailer. Um they put their company logo again so that it's protecting the front. So they did an excellent job. Excellent job, and yeah. And as we, I said before on the first show, painter's tape, painter's tape is your friend. Mm -hmm. um, lots of painter's tape. Lots, lots and lots. Um, so this next one, they used a different kind of mailer. Um, this is from another seller from the Martini Group. So this is another ki kind of mailer. Um, pretty strong, pretty sturdy, and it's got, you know, the buffers and stuff like that. And uh, what I slid out there is a slab with bubble wrap. And um, Matthew Wallen, just very professional. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, like, three sellers that I really trust. Okay. Eric's told me that, you know, he's got over a 1,000 comics that if I'm looking for something, just to let him know. Oh, wow. Um, Oh, it's, I know it's only a nine two, but at home I have a nine eight mm -hmm. of them dancing in another position. Okay, and so I'm like, I need this one to go with that one. I, yeah, I need it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And and this one's signed as well. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome right there. Does it inspire you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I always does. <laughs> So yeah, I um, you know the the whole thought about Heather's long box that Varian was talking about. So going through you know my stuff was to talk about you know what I have in my long box and what um, I have one long box that's just full of like people's kickstarters and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get into that. But meanwhile, I'm um, increasing my collection. As nice, speak. nice, classic. That's a good one. This one's sexy. That is sexy. Wow. Wow, that's really nice. Wow. This one, this one might have to go in a frame on the wall. I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. As soon as uh. Sharky in your bedroom. Yeah, maybe the bedroom. Yeah. That's badass. You know, I used to ride. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I used to work for a vet, too, while I was going to school for nursing. Mm. Until my allergies got too bad. Oh, wow. But she was um, a renowned uh, reproductive specialist with the in equine um, community. So she liked to do show horses rather than race horses. But, ah. you know, still a horse. Oh, ah, that's bad. Wow, that's awesome, man. Huh? Yeah. Let's see. So, that my cover, friend... That cover looked like it was... Um, it reminded me of um, Heavy Metal. Yeah, it looks like one of the heavy, like some of yeah. the heavy metal covers. Yeah. I'm in a heavy metal group. Yeah. Yeah, they post a lot of 
suggestive and risque type stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody has their, their own thing that they like to collect. Right. And, you know, some of them, you know, com are comics that you like to read. Some of them you like to collect. Some of them is just for the artwork. Um, I know one woman who puts crystals on the Lady Death covers. And I think the covers are going for like 200 maybe more. I probably shouldn't say the price. Mm. But, yeah, Bill Shaner on Facebook, I'm friends with him and his wife, Wendy, does the crystals. Um, I think Larry Yeager in my comic book group also said, he has some um, some of those. Mm. So um, we had a whole discussion on how to display them so mm. that you weren't breaking the crystals off. Okay, so she actually put the crystals on. Oh, okay, I was just trying to figure out. Okay, wow. Yeah. yeah. That took a lot of work. So my friend Nikolai, okay, so it's Leo season. It's not Virgo season yet. Um, I'm not the type of person that usually celebrates their, their birthday all month long. <laughs> <laughs> a birthday card already. It's your birthday. Anything's possible. And, um, you know, who's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to know my favorite. Yeah. I'm all about justice. <laughs> oh, that's badass. That's dope. So he said <laughs> that he bought me something that it just wasn't for anybody. He had to send this to me. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. It has three of the DC ladies on there, and I'm all about the DC ladies. Can you just pour my water in Right, there? right. <laughs> <laughs> I got my studio cup now. <laughs> yeah. So that way we don't have to fight with the vending machine. Right. <laughs> this is the so, so last time I was here, I stuck my hand up and you could they took a picture of my fingers trying to get my fucking chocolate. Is that what you were doing? Oh. That's what I was doing. I was my three musketeers was stuck. So you know, I'm thinking, you know, okay, I, I, you know. I saw I, that. I saw that. I had to rock. Rock. <laughs> I had to shake that machine up. So um, you know, and I'm thinking it's a one-time thing, right? No, today, that fucker wouldn't give me my chocolate again. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. But I didn't stick my hand in there this time. Because <laughs> I knew rocking it would work. Right. I rocked it last time. Yeah. So um, so that was like, so I had like several packages in the mail today. It was like Christmas time, you know. And um, this is not comic related. But... The final package that I got, and um, and this is why you have to ship things in the right in the right kind of yeah. packages because I just ripped the bag open. Okay, they just put it in the bag to ship it to me, and this is the the manufacturer's box that's like totally crushed. The you know the stuff's coming out. So I don't know like if there's a part that's like broken off or something. You know. Right. Exactly. Um, or don't know something that might have been added to it that probably had its own little separate box and it's separate. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I bought, um, what the fuck was that? Hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I bought a selfie stick. So, um, you know, I, I think it's not broken. I think it's in good shape. But that's why it's, you know, so important. All right, it is. You do not want to put a comic and flimsy cardboard no like the the priority mailbox mm -hmm. that they sell or those little flimsy envelopes you don't want to put just a comic book in there without protection um so um especially you know or, or even artwork too because um i remember um ren mm -hmm. did a medusa for me oh yeah you know and it wasn't you know, he's, he's, he's worth what he asked for. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no problem with the price whatsoever. I pay for my artwork. I pay for my comics. No problem with that. Anything that I do get from a get, as a gift, you know, that's, it's not me asking. It's not me flashing my boobs either. You know, I know one guy, he says he doesn't make any money at comic cons because the girls offer to show their boobs and he gives them the artwork and he's like, and I never get to see any titties. I'd be okay with that. I mean, you know, 
<laughs> so I pay, I pay for my artwork unless, you know, an artist friend gives me a, a, a piece of art for, as a gift. Um, so anyway, the, the thing from Ren got bent, you know, in, you know, and it wasn't just like the top, like above the piece or right. anything. It was creased, you know, so I've got it in my Frank Cho book, hopefully that will, you know, help it a bit. Hopefully, yes. So come on, Frank, do the magic. <laughs> come on, you love sexy women too. And the piece that Ren, I always say Ren knows sexy. Yeah. And yeah. He, he did a Medusa for Ren, me. Ren, uh, yeah, he, he knows his stuff on that one, definitely. Yeah. He, he knows his way around the body and the curves is what you're saying, right? I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ren's cool. He, you, he cool, but yeah, I don't. Ren McKenzie. Yeah, Ren McKenzie. Style. He, he moves, so I don't see him often at our local Michigan cons. Yeah, I haven't seen Ren in a while. Ooh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. while. And I didn't, um, I like going to Jum City. Uh, yeah. That was last weekend in Ohio. But um, I didn't make it this year. I just wasn't up for the three-hour drive. Actually, I kind of forgot all about it. Actually, did you forget about Jim's Yeah, City? I did. It kind of, of it came across. It came across me when I was like, "Oh man, that's all we." Yeah. How about that? So I got it. I got it on my calendar for next though. So I'm not worried. You know, I mean, that was a three-hour drive. It was three hour to. Yeah, I'm driven further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you were on a boat doing a three-hour tour, you didn't recognize what I was doing? I know that. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, wait a minute. You didn't get my... Yeah, I got <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I see I'm an island girl. I grew up on an island, so... Oh. I'm a city man, so... <laughs> Tires take me everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We don't rock the boat, Heather. You I don't know. <laughs> So that's the end of your, your collection for that's the end now? of That's the end of my mail call. Uh, like I said, I opened up the, you know, I had a little key and my little box. I opened up a big box and it was, uh, yeah, it was like Christmas, man. That's what's up. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And not my kid's t-shirt that she's dying and waiting for. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was just, it was mommy's day today. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um. She wants the Ozzy Osbourne t-shirt for her birthday. And they have a little um, set. You can get a stuffed bat with a removable head. <laughs> That's creative. That's very creative. I, well, you know, Sharon, I think Sharon is all in charge of the marketing stuff, so. Okay, yeah, I guess you're right, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. So, so cool. what con are you going to be at next? Oh, uh, well, my next con is really, really, really cool. Um, it's out there in Flint. It's the 6th and 7th of August. So, I'll be out there, actually. And I'll be in the vendor's um, area, not the artist alley. I'll be, in a, I'll be a vendor. And is the wifey booking a room? Yes. With a jacuzzi and, and arcade game? They can enjoy it all. <laughs> <laughs> I never get to enjoy the stuff. I see the stuff very last minute. So, yeah, they'll be they'll be um, enjoying that, enjoying that while I'll be down. She does her research because because we were supposed to have dinner and she had already fed the kids. She took them to some bouncy place mm -hmm. um, out in Grand Rapids, and um, you know she so. does everything pretty much. They go from it's like when a, a time we went to um, St. Louis for a show. They went to the museums. They went to the, you know, the, the zoo. They went everywhere. All I saw was downtown <laughs> St. Louis. <laughs> so and went to the it. hotel. <laughs> and that was it. I didn't see nowhere else. Everybody said, did you go sightsee? No, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. When I went to C2E2, um, you know, I spent like over $1,000 on my accommodations. Yeah. I was at the hotel like 10 minutes away from the hotel where the con was at and you city people are nuts i mean this doesn't happen in detroit <laughs> i don't i don't think this applies to you but chicago people park their vehicles they pay for parking and then they pay for someone to drive them around in an uber that was like 2015 that was the first time i ever heard of uber 
Oh, wow. So I'm paying for fucking parking. Pardon my mouth. I just, you know, fuck was my first word. You can ask my mother. <laughs> Much to her shame. Um, so I parked my I parked my minivan. I uh, Dave Music has passed away, but um, oh. you know I drove from my place to uh, all the Grand Rapids. Picked him up, picked up all the comic book frames and everything, and then we drove to Chicago. He was a little upset because he couldn't smoke in my car because I'm asthmatic. And um, he sure needed a cigarette after I got done driving, he said. <laughs> and um, so we parked behind the the venue. And then I'm paying somebody to drive me to my hotel, which is 10 minutes away. But because of all the construction, mm-hmm. and maybe the driver knew what he was doing, taking the long way around, you know. And um, yeah, it, cost him, it cost him me for that. And 12 bucks for a yogurt and a granola bar. Yeah, the city city life is just crazy to me. Yeah, I go to, I go and I buy all my fruits and veggies at uh, blocks at a you know a little market you know family that's that's been farming for a hundred years, um, you know, and I stack up and freeze what I can. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I live out in sticks. Oh. Mm. Oh wow. So, well, okay, so out in Flint. Next weekend, and you have a full uh, Comic Con schedule for when do you get a break? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much have a show every month to the end of the year. So, yeah, and see, that's another thing that my wife pretty much really does too. She books all my shows. So, technically, all I have to do is really go in the office and get to work. And that's pretty much one of her slogans, pretty much. Don't you got work to do? Get to work. It's like, you know, we got to hit the show. Yep. Okay, Tasha. Right. So, <laughs> like, oh. you got prints that need to be done out? Get them out. You got books that need to be done? Get them out. That's pretty much really it. Do you think that on one of your pages, I don't know if you have a website set up, you can list all your shows and, like, make that, like, a pinned post or something? Actually, um, on my website, actually, I have um, shows. I just I posted, like, three, pretty much, three shows that's going to be coming up okay. that I do. So, they all on my website. Which is? Uh, Dave Sketches 007 at Wixspace.com. So, you can check it out there. Um, I have posted, like I said, just three shows, pretty much, you know, that I'm going to, and then after those three are done, then I post up the next three. Okay. Okay. Just give the people a little bit at a time. Pretty much, really. And therefore, I want to make sure, you know, you know how some shows, you know, big shows, no, but mostly little shows, you know, if anything ever, cancellations or anything like that, I want to make sure everything's pretty much concrete, you know. That's, no, that's good planning. Good planning. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me today. I had fun. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you both for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I I, I think that we deserve free t-shirts, Varian. Oh, I do. <laughs> we don't want baseball caps. You can't mess with this. All of this. And make sure if you get a shirt, make sure it covers all of this. Because... <laughs> <laughs>